We're joined now with our political insiders. We have Charlie Giroux on the Republican side and Tony May, of course. Tony, I'll start with you. The uh, president really coming under fire again, or still, maybe I should say, about tweeting. Uh, some of the tweets were rather harsh, some of them toward the London mayor right. uh, more recently. Uh, it doesn't seem to be affecting, though, his behavior or his base support. I don't know if it's affecting his base support or not because it's really an invisible, it, it's a silent majority kind of situation in his, who, who, who his supporters are. But it's not that he's tweeting, it's what he's tweeting that's getting him into trouble and it'll continue to get him into trouble. And it's likely even if he didn't tweet, if he just spoke out, he'd still get the same blowback. Charlie? Well, hard to imagine. Once again, I sort of agree with Tony. It's not the fact that he's tweeting. Presidents have tweeted before. Barack Obama did it a lot, not always well. But the president has to really stop look and listen before he tweets because now what's happening is even Republican leaders are publicly saying what they've been privately saying previously which is hold up on some of this because yeah, Lindsey there's Graham this even said that too. Yeah, and there's this notion that somehow these tweets are not official pronouncements but those are distinctions without differences when the president says something there's tremendous reaction around the world to what's said whether it's on a tweet or in some official document could it affect our relationships with other countries like i know a lot of the people in, in well, no England single are tweet angry. is likely to do that but yes well, the I think they rolled up the red carpet in london already <laughs> not, not, not going to roll it out again all right. Right. Um, let's switch gears here now. Pension reform, the bill passed um, in the Senate over the weekend. What does that mean? How much will this really help? It will pass in the House. It's very interesting to watch Tom Wolf try to take credit for it, a man who told us just a short three years ago that there was no pension crisis. Now, of course, he's going to be the savior on this. This is a first step, Larry. It's an important first step. It doesn't solve the problem totally, but it gets us on the path to doing that. Legislatures generally, and especially the legislature in Pennsylvania, don't tend to solve big problems in one fell swoop. Tony, I'll let you defend the governor on this one. Well, it, I, I, I don't think there's a need to defend the governor. This is a, uh, an agreed upon bill negotiated by the, the, the Republicans and the, and the Democrats in the House and the Senate and the governor's office. It's a compromise. It's not a great compromise, but it's one that will improve the system over time. But it's going to be not in my lifetime that we'll get the bill paid off that we now owe to uh, the pension funds. All right, we have like 30 seconds left. Comey on Thursday, do you expect any bombshells? Not really. The president did not invoke executive privilege. He had the right to do that. By not doing it, I think he chose the, the proper and appropriate political path. Let's see what Comey says. Most importantly, let's see what he knew and what he did about it. Tony? Brings us back full circle to the tweet issue at the beginning. The president says he may well tweet live during the testimony by John Comey. If he does that, it'll be a living disaster. All right. <laughs> I think we'll wrap it up right there. Thank you guys. You can catch our political insiders every uh, right here every Tuesday. And remember to join us for CBS 21's Face the State Sunday mornings at 830 right here on, of course, CBS 21.